Hi friends, it's Jennifer from Live, Laugh, Love to Read. Today I'm going to be showing you the rest of the books that were donated recently to the Little Free Library. I told you in the last video um, that there was quite a few, so I split this up into two videos. And I might call this part two and that one part one, so that would be a little easier for you. But let's just get started. I'm not going to tell you the synopsis on every one because there's like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine books here. And these are all hardback. And let's see if I can show you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my lands. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bunch of them. Okay. Oh, goodness. Okay, that was heavy. So, the first one, The Shape of Night by Tess Garretson. Um, I have read Tess Garretson. I want to say I read one book of hers, and hers are pretty, um, what's the word? Creepy? I think they're creepy. I don't know. That might just be me, but yeah. Uh, don't look at my hair today. My hair is being crazy. Like right here. <laughs> being crazy. Anyway, <laughs> this one is about Ava. It says, after an unspeakable tragedy in Boston, Ava Collette flees to a remote village in Maine, where she rents an old house named Brody's Watch. In that isolated seaside mansion, Ava finally feels at peace until she glimpses the long-dead sea captain who still resides there. Hmm. Yeah, see, I'm not really a big uh, Tess Garretson fan, but somebody is who comes to the Little Free Library. The next one is The Help by Catherine Stockett. I have already read this. I might read it again because I really liked it. I was just thinking about this book the other day, too. How, how um, weird is that? I don't know why I was thinking about it, but anyhow, if you don't know what this one's about, let me tell you. It says, uh, three extraordinary women are, oh no, three ordinary women are about to take one extraordinary step. 22-year-old Skeeter has just returned home after graduating from Ole Miss. She may have a degree, but it is 1962, Mississippi, and her mother will not be happy till Skeeter has a ring on her finger. Skeeter would normally find solace with her beloved maid, Constantine, the woman who raised her. But Constantine has disappeared, and no one will tell Skeeter where she has gone. Abilene is a black maid, a wise, regal woman, raising her 17th white child. Something has shifted inside her after the loss of her own son, who died while his bosses looked the other way. She is devoted to the little girl she looks after. She knows both their hearts may be broken. Minnie, Abilene's best friend, is short, fat, and perhaps the sassiest black woman in Mississippi. She can cook like nobody's business, but she can't mind her tongue. So she's lost yet another job. Minnie finally finds a position working for someone too new to town to know her reputation. But her new boss has secrets of her own. So if you have not read this, you need to read it because it's really good. And the movie was good too. Um, <laughs> but I had just read the book when I went and seen the movie with, um, I want to say my sister and my daughter. And I was like... Um, it matches pretty good, but I was, I might have been given a little bit of commentary, but <laughs> things like, I'm like, oh, watch this part. This is funny. Oh, watch it. Yeah. And they were like, shh. And I was like, sorry. Yeah. But anyway, that's really good. Uh, <laughs> this is funny. I was just talking about this one in the other video. Uh, Pieces of Her by Karen Slaughter. This was really good. I read this already. I might read this again. Hmm. This was really good. Um, let's see. This one follows Andrea. Andrea, Ol Andrea Oliver knows everything about her mother, Laura. She knows Laura has spent nearly her whole life in the beachside town of Belle Isle, Georgia. She knows Laura's... There's a sticker on here. Sorry. Hang on. Ugh, I hate when they do that. Um, let's see. She knows Laura's never wanted anything more than to lead a quiet, normal life in this conventional community. She knows Laura's a kind and beloved speech pathologist who helps others. She knows Laura's never had a secret in her life. Hmm. Andrea knows that Laura is everything she isn't. Confident, settled, sure of herself. 
Feeling listless with no direction, Andrea, unlike Laura, struggles to find her way. So that's all I'm going to read in that one because um, I want to read you this little thing on in the inside. This is from um, Karen Slaughter. She says, Dear Reader, have you ever looked at the person you know best in the world and wondered what really lies below the surface? Whether what you see is genuinely what you get? I've always been fascinated by the secrets and lies that underpin our lives, and so that's the question pieces of her ask. Can you ever know anybody completely? I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, that was good. I read that. It was really good. I like Karen Slaughter. If you don't, you might not like it, but this was one of the better ones, I thought. So, the next one is Summer of 69 by Ellen Hildebrand. And I read this already, too, and this was really good. So, this one says, Welcome to the most tumultuous summer of the 20th century. It's 1969 for the Levin family. The times, they are a-changing. Every year, the children have looked forward to spending the summer at their grandmother's historic home in downtown Nantucket. So, yeah, this is about Nantucket, which I love any book about Nantucket. This was really good. I'm not going to read all of it because I did a book review on this a few uh, videos back. If you want to know what this is about, this was really good. So that was in there. Another one by Ellen Hildebrand, The Perfect Couple. I've read this too, but it's been quite a while ago. This one's about Nantucket. Um, let's see. Nantucket wedding season, also known as summer. The sight of a bride racing down Main Street is as common as the sun setting at Medecket Beach. The Otis Winberry wedding promises to be an event to remember. The groom's wealthy parents have spared no expense to host a lavish affair at their oceanfront estate. So I think this might... I don't know if it goes together with this one, but I know I read them both, but I read this one more recent because this one's a newer one. But, whoo, whoo, yeah. <laughs> so those are in there. Next one, Never Tell by Lisa Gardner. And I have read Lisa Gardner. I like her. And I don't think I have read this one. Let's see. It says... Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so this looks like it goes to something. What truly goes on behind closed doors? You can never tell. Uh, Lisa Gardner returns with a twisty thriller that puts Dee Dee Warren and Flora Dane on a shocking new case where one family's secrets may cost everything. Would you believe me if I told you I love my husband? A pregnant wife stands over her husband's dead body, smoking gun in hand. She claims she didn't kill him. But homicide detective Dee Dee Warren recognizes her immediately. Evie Carter investigated years before in the shooting death of her own father. How many accidents can one woman have? Hmm, that sounds interesting. But I think, uh, like I said, it sounds like it um, is about the same people that were in maybe this one, Find Her, maybe. Hmm, I haven't read enough of Lisa Gardner to know for sure. But that looks good. Next one, Undercurrents by Nora Roberts. And look at this picture on the back of her. <laughs> I'm not a Nora Roberts fan, so I didn't know what she looked like. Let's see when this was wrote. Let's see if that's current. Which, it doesn't mean that's a current picture. She has wrote a lot of books. Let's see if we can find when this one was wrote. This one was wrote in 2019, so this is a new book. Wow. Okay, let's see. Um, within the walls of a tasteful, perfectly kept house in North Carolina's Blue Ridge Mountains, young Zane Bigelow feels like a prisoner of war. Strangers, and even Zane's own aunt across the lake, see his parents as a successful surgeon and his stylish wife, making appearances at their children's ba ballet recitals and baseball games. Zane and his sister know the truth. There is something terribly wrong. As his father's violent, controlling rages and his mother's complicity become more and more oppressive, Zane counts the years, months, and days until he can escape. That actually sounds good. I might give that a try. Hmm. Are you a Nora Roberts fan? I'm not usually. I mean, I have read some of hers, but normally I don't care for her, but that actually sounds good. Next one. 
um, we when we found home by Susan Mallory. This one is about Callie Smith. Doesn't know how to feel when she discovers she has a brother and a sister. Malcolm, who grew up with affection, wealth, and privilege. And Kiera, a streetwise 12-year-old. Callie doesn't love being alone, but at least it's safe. Despite her trepidation, she moves into the Grand family home with her siblings and grandfather on the shores of Lake Washington, hoping just maybe this will be the start of a new life. Hmm. That sounds kind of good. Hmm. And the last book, Look For Me by Lisa Gardner. Let's see if this one's about the same people. Um, yep, it's about Dee Dee Warren. Okay, so this one and where'd that other one go? This one go together. Um, because they're both about Dee Dee, uh, Sergeant Dee Dee Warren. Oh, and Flora Dane. Okay, I have not read these, so I don't know. Maybe I will. Hmm. Says a perfect, okay, is she the perfect daughter? A perfect autumn day in Boston is shattered when four family members are visually gunned down in the comfort of their own home. Still missing is a 16-year-old daughter, Roxana Baez. Witnesses report that she took the family's two dogs for a walk shortly before the shooting. Was she lucky to have escaped the carnage? Or does her absence speak of something more sinister? Ooh. So, yeah, this must be part of a series, these two. And I, like I said, have read some Lisa Gardner, but I'm not like a big fan of her. So, I don't know. We'll see. So, that was it. That was really a big donation. And I thank whoever did it. I don't know who did it. Um, but, yeah, I'm very thankful uh, that she, I know it was a woman, though, because um, it was just how it was packed and how, yeah, anyway. <laughs> So, and plus the kind of books, I'm pretty sure it was a woman. Um, but anyhow, these are all really, most of these have, are ones that I would read. Um, some of these I've already read, but that's all I have for today. If you like this video, give me a like and a subscribe. And don't forget to check back for more book videos coming up. Thanks, friends. I'll see you next time.